everyone a different kind of screen uh, today for you all i decided to make a powerpoint and uh, which is the i mean the best way to start with is uh, the spider and the fly uh, it it sort of lends itself to a perfect powerpoint presentation yes so mary botham howitz uh, spider and the fly uh, of course I, i'm not too good with technology but once in a while you'll see my uh me disappearing while i'm changing the slide but i'll be back yes okay so we move on to the next slide which of course is you know a few details about uh, which comes to, words that comes to my mind when i think about spider the first of course is arachnophobia i hope none of you suffer from arachnophobia now uh, immediately you know when i was looking at the word arachnophobia where has Uh, the word come so why are spiders called arachnids now uh, the greek mythology there is a story that arachne was a mortal who who is to weave perfect tapestries and she she sort of challenged athena to a contest and her her you know, her uh, whatever she had woven were much you know, more exquisite much more exquisite than uh, athena so how can a mortal be better than a goddess so she was punished transformed into a spider and she could weave webs for the rest of her existence okay that's how arachne spider yes uh, uh another one <laughs> you know as teachers we come across varied forms of handwriting you know some good some plain some simple some illegible and do you have a spidery handwriting is yours like that that's a question i put if yours is like that be careful it's good otherwise but you know if you take on speed while you are completing your 20 mark answer and it it will flow like probably the amphan uh, that's that's the cyclone super cyclone that's supposed to hit uh, calcutta this evening or early tomorrow morning your writing will be illegible illegible so better be careful if you have a spidery and writing and the last one are you superstitious because if you want to live and thrive let the spider run alive never kill a spider you know there's a spider roaming in the house and you try to kill it you'll have somebody say don't 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 never kill a spider it'll be bad luck superstition uh, a few thoughts associated with the spider so i thought i would share it right okay now we we move on to the uh, poem of course the first one is about Uh, Mary Botham Howitt. She's she's born Mary Botham. I married William Howitt, English poet, essayist, translator, historian. Uh, she's dabbled in a lot of things. Uh, though born uh, in English poet, yet you'll find her uh, uh, spellings are very American because that's where she moved part of her life. And of course, she died in Rome. So she, she's been moving quite a lot. Uh, she wrote poetry at a very early age, like I've given. and of course the best known uh, she's best known for a fable the spider and the fly which was published in 1829 it had a subtitle a new version of an old story i will revisit this uh, in course of our discussion okay so just a, uh, a face for the poet now we move into the poem proper the first stanza yes ah oh, will you walk into my parlor said the spider to the fly I've numbered the lines and I've put in the very first stanza the rhyme scheme. It's a very simple rhyme scheme: A A, fly spy, B B, stare there, C C, vain again. So it's it's like a couplet, rhyme couplets that the way it runs. And if there are eight lines, you will have some of the stanzas which are eight lines, some six, and the last one is four. Yes, but a very simple rhyme. It reads like a child's um, uh, poem. Yes, it has to be rhymed. and a fable right so the opening sentence is in a form of a question and it has become a uh, it's become like i said a uh, aphorism um uh, it's become so popular it has become an aphorism um uh, like standing for a like i've written a false offer of a friendship yes um aphorism as you know is a simple saying that becomes a general truth so will you walk into my parlor is an aphorism for a false offer of friendship um it's a prettiest little parlor that you ever did spy so praising it unnecessary i mean when do you praise something that belongs to yourself when probably when either you're a very vain person 
or probably when you're hiding the truth you want to guise it so use a prettiest little parlor how do you know okay what is the parlor that's also a question the way into my parlor is up a winding stair and have many pretty things to show when you are there oh no 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 said the little fly to ask me is in vain for who goes up your winding stair can never come down again so you see from the very first stanza you have these two characters who are poles apart you have uh, the the spider who is uh, all sweet nothings that he's speaking about yet what are the words associated how what does he speak a winding stair that ever you did spy the use of spy and winding they're not very direct they're steeped in uh, mistrust and lure and you know like the, the your know, false sense of uh, something which is hunky dory when actually the truth behind it it is not and that is the that is the estimate that you get about the spider here i have many pretty things pretty pala pretty things to show false 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 it comes becomes very clear yes and the fly is aware of it because immediately it says oh no no to it's in vain don't ask me i'm not going to come in yeah, you are useless useless if you to go on luring me i'm not going to come in so what does the response here show that he's the that she the fly is uh, is wise is sensible is uh, she follows what she has been told uh, for who goes up your winding stair can never come down again yes uh, that is that is uh, it's a winding stair and i've been told i need to be wary of it yes it's something that is known it's something that is uh, a kind of a, a truth that we uh, we all uphold that never go uh, to a spider's parlor yes and of course a spider and a fly they have never been friends so the doubt will definitely come into the fly's mind why is he asking me to come into his parlor yes right so that's your opening stanza we move to the second one the second stanza ah look at look what the spider does here i'm sure you must be weary dear is storing up so high will you rest upon my little bed said the spider to the fly so what are, what are the terms of endearment that he's using he's saying oh you dear he says dear when do you call somebody a dear somebody who's very close to you was the spider ever is the spider ever close to the fly no they pull us apart right but the tone here is very servile ingratiating you know the sugary sweet which actually has a lot of bitterness behind yes and the use of weary yes uh, and that you soar up so high in the sky and i know that you work so hard i know that you toil so hard you must be so tired so rest upon my little bed yes so you know the kind of like i've written the kind of a tactic which is Uh, supposed to be steeped in concern but we know it is not very genuine it is not very genuine and i also like to put a question what is the little bed that the spider what bed does the spider have what is his bed if i ask you what is it what will the answer be the web right wow and can it be comfortable i don't think so but look he, he look at the look at the words that he is using yes The, there are pretty curtains drawn sheets are fine and thin and if you like to rest a while i'll snugly tuck you in so you see he gives the details about uh, making everything so comfortable i draw the curtain it'll be a nice warm cozy room the sheets will be fine and thin because you're such a delicate creature so the sheets are fine and thin again comfort and then i will tuck you in i'll make you comfortable so it's in the guise of a very empathetic friend you know, giving a picture of warmth and comfort and something which is so dainty and delicate yes very very similar to a web somewhere deep down don't you get the impression of a web yes and you know where the spider is luring the fly into 
But see the response of the fly. Oh, no, no, said the little fly. For I've often heard it said. Again, in line 11, the fly says, I'm, I'm going by experience. It's not the, inf it's the information that she has received, not what she has experienced. Information that she has received. So, uh, I'm going by that. Yes. They never, never wake again. See, so the, the, the repetition is for emphasis. They never, never wake again. That means they're dead and gone. To sleep upon your bed. Your bed is the web, right? Your bed is the web. So, uh, the entire theme here is, of course, how the spider is now enticing the uh, fly to come into his parlor, his web. So that's, I've left you with a rhetoric question. Is the bed with fine and thin sheets his web of snaring and hapless fly? It could be. Yes. Why not? Yes. Stanza 3. Now, now you see from, uh, for the first time we have an adjective to establish the kind of creature the spider is. Cunning, sly. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the I mean, the core of bitterness and evil and anything else vile that you'll find is in the spider. But his tone is sweet. And that is what makes it most dangerous. You know, you can't see through such people. If I'm assuming the spider to be like a person, all sweetness and goodness on the outside, the facade, while inside is bitter and evil. Yeah. Okay. So what does the spider say? Dear friend, what shall I do? I mean, to prove the warm affection I've always felt for you. See, he's going on the same tone. Okay. And now he's calling a friend, a dear friend. No, no, no longer, you know, the same tone continues. Uh, dear friend, uh, uh, weary little creature. So the concern, dear friend, direct address. Now, what, what else do you want me to do? What else do you want me to offer you that will prove to you that I mean uh, to be kind? Yes. I'm feeling the affection, warm affection that I have for you, yes? So this kind of familiarity that he's trying to create, yes? I have within my pantry good store of all that's nice. I'm sure you're very welcome. Will you please to take a slice? So now next is the rest and is over. So now the way to the heart is through the stomach, as it is said. So I've got this open pantry for you. Come in, there are lots of love delicious spread for you. You can pick up anything that you want. Take a slice. You want a little slice of whatever. Whatever comes to your mind, you can think about it. A slice of cake, a slice of cheese, a slice of melon, a slice of bread, whatever. Anything. The parlor, uh, my, my pantry is open for you. So from the parlor to the pantry. But the reply of the fly remains the same. Oh, no, no, said the little fly. But there is a change of tone. What in response to dear friend, what does the fly say? Kind sir. Slight change. That cannot be. I have heard what's in your pantry and I do not wish to see. Again, going by what hearsay. I have heard. So, the kind sir is politeness and in response politeness so dear friend in response kind sir right so but again the reason for rejecting the offer is what she has heard yes so i am not going to accept your food that you have your pantry that you have because i do not have heard other things about your pantry and not what you are offering. So I cannot go in there. Right? Okay. So it tells you a lot about the kind of a person the fly is. He is also, she's very polite. So dear friend response is kind sir. But it's still a no-no. And we move to stanza four. Now you see what the spider says. 
from dear friend now sweet creature so the praises continue the familiarity continues sweet creature said the spider you're witty and you're wise okay now now i'm coming on to personal qualities so i've written about hamlet here where a uh, famous line of shakespeare frailty thy name is woman which is oft misquoted as vanity thy name is woman yes and uh, so what is the next approach of the spider to now target the qualities of the fly to address the pride that every person possesses within himself or herself vanity vain right vain yes you're witty and you're wise you're such a you're such a sweet a sweet creature you're kind and sweet you're also witty you're very intelligent look at what you've told me about my pantry and my parlor you're also wise you're intelligent yes no doubt about it and then goes on to praise the wings and the eyes how handsome are your gauzy wings how brilliant are your eyes and you see you are you are so perfectly molded yes compliment after compliment the flattery will cause what will cause the fly to drop her guard yes talking about the wings which are like sheer gauze you know that the flimsy delicate object that we see your eyes are big and brilliant they're shining and then why don't you look how at yourself how beautiful you look i have a lovely looking glass a mirror so come and look at yourself see how beautiful i'm sure you have never seen it so the enticing continues but now it is through flattery of the self yes the image the physical beauty which is the first thing that one sees right if you will step in one moment dear the uh, the endearments do not go you shall behold yourself you can see yourself i thank you gentle sir she said for what you are pleased to say i'm bidding you good morning now and call on another day can you see a change of tone it's no longer no 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 i thank you gentle sir sweet creature responds gentle sir yes i thank you gentle sir for what you are pleased to say can you can you understand how the how the response has changed something within the fly has started warming up towards the spider perhaps she started feeling a bit comfortable now in his presence yeah i put red riding hood because you know while i was uh, doing this and writing it out it reminded me about you know when um, when each time the red riding hood is telling the wolf dressed in her grandmother's clothes what big eyes you have and the wolf says to see you better with dear what big ears you have to hear you better with dear remember that i don't know somehow you know i found a connection so that false sense of comfort luring the fly into his web yes and look at the last line line 24 and bidding you good morning now 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 at this moment i'm wishing you good morning but i'll call another day did she ever mention it in the earlier stanza that she's going to come again no she does here so what does it mean she has gone into a false sense of security feeling happy now in the presence of the spider less threatened she her sensible self is gradually evaporating what has happened she is allowed flattery to seep in and the vain ego and pride is now being being brought into the forefront and that is changing her outlook stanza 5 okay Now you see the spider is so clever he says okay i can see the change in her so i'm not going to mess around i'm not going to force things now she's changing she'll fall into my trap soon 
So he turns around as if disinterested. Disinterested. The spider turned him round about and went into his den. For well he knew the silly fly would soon be back again. He knows, he knows. Well, she is falling into my trap. So her dear friend and beautiful um, uh, fly and all that is now come to what his real thoughts are about the fly. Silly. The silly fly will come back. That is, that is the actual uh, you know, thought in the spider's mind about the fly. The fly is silly. It's a fool. It will fall into my trap. I know for sure. Yes. So, uh, the, because I'll be back another day has shown her weakness. And that is the weakness that the spider is now going to fan. Yes. He's sure about the outcomes. So, about the outcome, sorry. And so, there will be more praise for her beauty. Yes. Like I've said, oaths to her beauty, yes. So he wove a subtle web in a little corner sly and set his table right, ready to dine upon the fly. Now you see the subtle web, the corner sly, the slyness, the subtlety, which is, which is crude, of the spider is now being transferred to the objects around, a transferred epithet this. So his slyness, his subtlety is now transformed into the web and the corner where the spider is, where he's, where he's weaving his web to snare the fly. And that is his table. So the table of the, the parlor, the table which was going to be laid down for the fly to feast on is actually the table, the web that the spider is weaving to have his meal, which is the fly. Yes. So, the like I put, this, his slyness is transferred to the corner where he's weaving his web. So, subtle, sly are the key words here. Yes. He's going to dine himself. He's not offering anything to the fly. That was just to lure him, lure her, sorry. Yes, and uh, as, as I've written in stanza 3, so in stark contrast to the table here. Yes. And then he goes on to praise the fly. Come hither, hither, pretty fly. The pretty has come back. And talks of gems and invaluable and precious stones. Pretty pearl and silver wing. So it's no longer gauze and thin and delicate. It is pearl and silver. Everything that's so precious. Your robes are green and purple. Again, colors of royalty. So he's transforming the fly into an into a queen. Probably a majestic figure. You have pearl and silver wing. You know, it's like the gown. Your robes are green and uh, pearl and silver wing are like the the uh, the accessories. Okay. The gown is green and purple, like the royalty, um, the colors of royalty, the robes of the uh, king or the queen. And there is a crest upon your head. You know, the antenna the uh, fly uses, you know, like to feel its way through. The antenna is like the crown. So you are, you are uh, majesty epitomized, probably, yes. And then your eyes are like the diamond bright. Again most precious of all jewels, the diamond. And in contrast, mine are like lead. It's so gross. It's so common. Yes. So this contrast is deliberate to show again, like I've written, a false magnanimity. A lot of you know, goodness, goodness for the beauty of the fly, but everything is false. And that is something which we have to remember. The character of the spider, which is so uh, clearly revealed through the words used, right? We move to stanza 6, right? And you see here, how does it begin? Alas, alas, uh, the, all the sensible 
thoughts of the fly, the strong will not to fall prey to all that the spider is saying is gone. How very soon this silly little fly, hearing his wily, flattering words, comes slowly flitting, flitting by. So he is silly. The spider used to call the fly silly. The silliness is revealed because she allows flattery to get to her and she comes flying into the trap that the spider has laid out for her. With buzzing wings she hung aloft, then nearer and nearer drew, thinking only of her brilliant eyes and green and purple hue. So, so it's, like, it's like Freudian, that uh, ego. When you're fanning the ego, you don't see beyond it. You forget about the winding stair. You forget about the parlor that is uh, that everybody around has told you, which is false. You forget it because you're only thinking about yourself. And that buzzing wind, you know, zzz, the kind of sound that she comes flying in. And because she's, for her, the, the goal is no longer the web. Because in front of her eyes, she's thinking about her diamond eyes. She's thinking about her golden, her green and purple robe. She's thinking about the royal picture that uh, the spider has painted of her. That is floating in front of her eyes. And she's visualizing her, her beauty and moving into this web of darkness yes thinking only of a crested head poor foolish thing poor foolish thing you see it's in italics this is the poet saying poor foolish thing not silly and foolish she's allowed flattery to get to her at last that at last here you see it is sort of uh, it's sort of uh, it's run on enjambment at last can be used for the fly. At last she's falling a prey to what the spider is saying. And at last the spider has finally hit the nail on the head. At last the fly is within its grasp. So at last is uh, to be used the uh, sense of finality for both. Yes, up jumped the cunning spider and fiercely held her fast. Finished. That's the end. Yes. He dragged her up his winding stair into his dismal den within his little parlour, but she never came out again. That is it. So true the statement, pride comes before a fall, yes. So she allowed flattery to overpower her sensibilities. She reveled in the praises showered on her forgot about the dangers that she has been spoken to earlier. Yes, she is foolish. Yes, and, uh, and the spider immediately takes the action. What does he do? Held her fast, immediate action. Yes, dragged her up the winding stair. Up the, you know, that when you think of a web, from the outside moving to the inside, core of the web. And she never came out again. So the beautiful parlor with sheer curtains, warm bed. What is a real picture? The real picture is the dismal den. That is the true picture of the parlor and the curtains and warm bed. In reality, it is only the, the web, which is his den. That's where the spider lives. Right. Stanza 7. That is the, the final one, four, four lines. And now, my dear little children, who made this story read, you idle, silly, flattering words, I pray you never give heed. Unto an evil counsellor close heart and ear and eye and take a lesson from this tale, of the spider and the fly. So lines 41 to 44 is the note of caution. Yes. So like I've written, the story ends... And this stanza is a direct address to the audience or readers. So it's a, it's a moral. The moral is revealed here. It's a story of temptation. Now, if you remember what I told you that the earlier uh, uh, 
the original story we told right the original story is of the snake and eve adam and eve and the apple in the garden of eden that is the original story of temptation don't give in to temptation what happens when eve gives in to the temptation of having the apple with the snake paradise is lost yes the garden of eden is tarnished forever so if you give in to flattery if you give in to temptation you will lose the essence of a beautiful life and that is exactly what happens so what does the poet tells us what does it what does she tell us i pray you never give it don't pay attention to this unto an evil counselor close heart ear and evil counselor see the, the they could appear to it here the poet is counseling us be warned there are people abounding in this society they are cunning they are greedy they are evil they are vile they are avaricious they are they are hypocrites they are harmful they have ulterior motives please do not be gullible do not be so naive to the point of being foolish that you fall a victim to it don't blame destiny for it be strong see through their ploy see through their uh, their falsities don't fall a, fall victim to such people that abounds this so don't be a spider but don't be a fly either yes balance your life nobody is asking you to be greedy to steal to rob to kill nobody wants you to do that but also do not be so foolish that you fall victims to such people so maintain a balance the same balance that you uh, that you got in uh, that you've read in if by radiat kipling the same the same balance that you read in uh, in the uh, the poem uh, desiderata yes so we are talking about the balance which you need to maintain and not to give in to your vanity yes um, so do away with insincer- insincerity do away with duplicity Uh, like i've written it mary how it wants all children to be wary of people who speak sweet nothings for ulterior motives pay no heed do not be gullible and naive to the point of being foolish that's what happens to the spider and the fly yes i mean the spider is is the one who is the predator and the fly is the victim right so you don't have to be a predator you don't have to be a victim be a good human being so like i said anthropomorphism revealed here you have the predator like qualities of the sp- spider uh, like people abounding our society and you also have a lot of naive people like the fly but you must live a life of goodness and balance yeah all right the questions they're very similar all i put the first one which was in the isc 2019 paper describe the interaction between the spider and the fly in the poem the spider and the fly yes so the interactions between the spider so you're going to go through the different forms of luring you're going to keep to the tone that the spider uses the tone that the fly uses in rejecting and how the tone keeps changing and most of the points are written in this powerpoint so i think it should help you to frame your answer right so interaction so you're writing over the two characters the two protagonists there are two protagonists the spider and the fly so are you going to write about the moral uh, the moral aspect of it yes of course the interaction between the spider and the fly in the conclusion you can write bring uh, is what the poet tells us is the reality that we see in the world around yes and that's where you bring in the the moral aspect of it right you have to write it yes no because the spider stands for people whom we see around us so does the fly yes if you look at the second question with a, with appropriate textual references establish the spider and the fly as a cautionary tale for the naive and the innocent again same thing you have to be cautious you have to be uh, you have to be careful because there are so many people like the spider around so what does the spider do and then you see how it lures the 
from the very beginning till it's found its uh, it achieved its goal it does not change its tune it actually uh, modifies his tune to suit the need of the time so from trying to lure the uh, fly with food and rest it gradually moves to something that is proves to be uh, absolutely the perfect weapon that is pride false pride vanity right so from vain what the fly says in the beginning don't ask me to come it is all, it is all in vain that's what uh, she says the vain then now moves to vanity so uh, how the transformation takes place yes the third question again moral is the same with close reference to the poem the spider and the fly write critically how mary how it transforms an apparently childish poem into an allegory of specific importance for the modern reader so here the moral aspect of it the uh, the the cautionary uh, story the tale that uh, mary has woven for us if i may use the term it is an allegory of uh, of the reality that we see around us there's so many people i don't want to give a name to the spiders that we see around i also don't want to give a name to the flies that we see around yes all of us probably try to avoid being a spider or a fly what can we be probably we can be uh, dolphins i mean that's another creature that comes to my mind but let us be let us be kind and good and so uh, a childish poem about a spider and the fly like the red riding hood is transformed into one of uh, with deep thought and deep meaning so all the three questions more or less you will end up writing the similar kind of a answer except that bring like i said begin it according to what the question is keywords of the question use five or six quotes and i think you'll do good with this right so i hope you like this uh, this lesson that we did one class everything done powerpoint all points there enjoy read it stay safe and take care of yourself